Hi, Frederick. Hi. Thank, thank you so much for your time. A pleasure to meet you. And, and I just want to congratulate you on the documentary first and had the premiere at Sundance. And now we are here like to talk about to talk about it and everybody's going to be able to see in a couple of days, right? Thank so, you. Yes. Thank you so much for having me. Of course. How is it? How excited for you to have like now everybody's going to be able to see Invisible Beauty? It's very uh, nerve wracking, you know, I mean, um, we've been on the festival circuit for like six, six nine months now, almost <clears throat> since Sundance. We did Tribeca, Seattle, we went to London and everything. And um, the response, knock on wood, has been really good. You know, audiences are really responding to Beth Ann and her story. So I hope it will be the same, you know, in the um, theatrical run. <laughs> yeah, I hope so too. It's well, really, really beautiful, like well-crafted. And how this collaboration came about? Like how how did you guys decide it, like that Betan is going to be also a co-director, right? <laughs> I know that's unusual, right? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, I, I wanted something different. So I asked her actually. And um, the reason I asked her is because I felt like You know, there are so many um, um, biopics out there and um, I've done biographical films also and I was looking for a different way to to approach it. And um, the relationship with the subject is very interesting, usually in documentary, because, you know, um, you have um, a lot invested in them and sometimes you're also um, um, protective of your film because you feel like you're trying to say something. But I, I wanted to choose someone that I could trust and that I could really align myself with and do things completely differently, which was to be very connected with the subject. And the way to do that was to really ask the subject to collaborate. And with Beth Ann, I felt like I could do that. She's had such a an incredible story and, um, and she's such a... She's just someone I could trust, someone very wise and unconventional and um, who's been fighting for representation, you know. So when you think about representation, we have to and you're making a film, you have to really think about these issues deeply. And I think, you know, I asked her, it was almost like a dare, you know, it's like, okay, I'll do it, but you'll have to do it with me. And she <laughs> didn't expect it. And she said, yes. And then we're in business and it did change the game, you know, in a way that it even went beyond what I expected because we we were so connected through the process. It was very different from any process that I've had. And I think as a result, like the film is much more deep, you know? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I felt that like it was very deep and then she's very, like she's so powerful. And just looking at her, you <clears> see <throat> the power coming in. It's it's it, it's amazing, and and I bet you have a lot of like materials. You have a like a you. I I bet you you spoke to her a lot. Mm -hmm. There was a moment that you that you 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 thought that the movie can like this documentary can be like a docu series or like a limited <laughs> yes. series because of like so many materials. Like how did did you decide that like to become just a <laughs> a documentary? <laughs> <laughs> well, yes, we did think about it. And because, you know, like when we did the first cut, um, the first assembly was seven hours long. So we had like so much material. And then I brought it down to like four hours and I showed it to Beth Ann and, and she herself, she was like, we need to make a series. But the reality of it is, you know, like we had already told Our investors we were going to make a feature film you know that was what everyone had signed up for so eventually we did a a feature and the you know i think i don't regret because it's like by compressing it you're really making it much more impactful you know and that's it takes a long time to get from four from seven to four and then to two hours or less than two an hour fifty and then but it's worth it because i think it makes the story even more powerful Yeah, I know like you've been researching about her, been talking about about her, but what do you what the what was the thing that you found out about her that most surprised you? Mm -hmm. 
Oh my God, so many things. Um, she, <clears throat> she knows how to make a bed. <laughs> <laughs> and it takes a really long time. And I learned all the different steps you need to take in order to make your, your bed properly in the morning to start the day properly. Uh, <laughs> that's one practical thing. But, you know, I think what struck me the most is how she knows how to have a conversation and how to listen. Like very few people know to how to listen properly and really um, hear the other person, let them like try to understand their point of view. And then you can also express your point of view or you can just have this dialogue. It's like, you know, um, it's, it's very uh, rare uh, today that to find someone who's very strong in their opinion and then also knows how to listen. Yeah, you, you can see some of the archival footage, especially when she was with the young models. She's, mm -hmm. she's teaching that, but at the same time she was listening, like you can see in her face that she, she was listening to, she really listened, you know what I mean? Like, and it's, it's amazing. Also the research part, like you, I know that she had a lot of pictures, a lot of like the journals, the magazines and everything, but have you, you as like an editor, when it, like you have to go outside to find footage was like hard, was a challenge for you? Um, it was, um, no, it was great. I mean, we had a lot of resources, um, you know, to go to, um, I think Beth Ann's archive was like very well organized thanks to Keegan Webb, who's in the film, who's her assistant. And um, and then we had Paul Dallas, our co-producer and archival producer, who was also going outside of that, organizing it. And, you know, like she she modeled for Issey Miyake, for Calvin Klein. So Ralph, I mean, uh, Ralph Lauren also gave a lot of archives from Tyson Beckford. So we were able to you know, go to all these people that she's worked with and, and, and get more material. So that was great. But you know what, we're, st we're still finding things. I mean, it's like, even after we finished the film, we found some other interviews that <laughs> were also great. <laughs> That's good. You should do a limit series or a docu series. I don't know. <laughs> yes. Get my friend, let's go founding these. And because I know uh, she, she might have a lot of like wonderful stories. I wish I would be able to talk to her because I'm from Brazil and I know that uh, she went to Brazil a lot. So yes, <laughs> uh, she did. Yeah. So I was like, oh my God, maybe she, why Brazil? You know why she picked Brazil to to go more often than the other places. Well, she was going with she was going with Stephen Burrows, yeah, uh, the young designer at the time, and he was like really into uh, going to Brazil. Him and like his group of friends, they would meet once a year in Brazil, and then they would go to uh, um, oh, oh, I'm blanking on the name, but um, in the Mediterranean, and you know they would have this kind of click in this little group that they would uh, travel sometimes together. Yeah, Brazil is very exotic. It's an exotic place, maybe, because of that, I don't know, <laughs> inspiration or something. Well, who wouldn't want to go to Brazil, I mean? <laughs> yes, it's good. Have you been there? Yes, I've been there. Yes, okay. I, I've, I've loved it. I've been there only once, I think, or twice. No, I, I think only once, but I went for... When my film Joe and I was released there, I went there, and one of my very good friends was um, is Brazilian from from film school, and so I had a wonderful time there. That's good, amazing. And and are you already planning your next project? Um. Yes. Yes. Any, um, anything that you can talk about, <laughs> like mm. <laughs> the subject or something. <laughs> No, I can't really talk about it. It's, it's all in flux, you know. I'm still kind of um, trying to decide between um, two um, different different things, and um, you know. But um, yeah, I think it's there are just a lot of great stories out there, so there, it's uh, it's an exciting time. Amazing. Frederick, I just want to thank you so much for your time. A pleasure to meet you. Merci beaucoup, and I hope Merci. to see you. Yeah, I hope to see you. Maybe one day 
in person. <laughs> Thank you so much for bringing those Thank you. beautiful stories. Thank you. Thank you very much. If you like this video, don't forget to comment, to like and subscribe to our channel right here.